I know it's early, but does being one of the last three undefeated teams, at least in Big 12 play, give you guys some hope or anything like that about what can be possible if you keep on winning? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, we definitely know our potential. You know, obviously with the last two wins that we had, um, you know, those last two wins that we had, we definitely were so cohesive and came together so tight and just played so well as a team. And, uh, you know, we obviously had struggles in both of those games. Um, you know, we weren't perfect whatsoever, but, you know, we definitely fought all four quarters and played all the 60 minutes. And, uh, you know, as long as you do that, you can keep winning and keep winning every game. And, uh, you know, we just attack every day at practice and just go out there and hope to keep this ball rolling. You maybe didn't put up huge stats last week, but it seemed like you had quite an impact on the game. How did you feel about it yourself being out there? Yeah, well, um, obviously, you know, my main goal is to go out there, do my job, um, stay disciplined to my gaps, and uh, just rush the passer when needed to. Um, obviously, you know, me or the other Deans didn't come up with any sacks, uh, but obviously, you know, we just need to keep getting pressure on the quarterback. Um, makes it a lot tougher when the quarterback's, you know, kind of a dual threat like their backup quarterback was. And just like how Max uh, Dugan will be at uh, TCU this upcoming week. Uh, but obviously, we just got to go out there and be disruptive as possible. And can you give me uh, a breakdown of TCU's offense? What are you going to have your eye on this week? Yeah, well, they're returning three three offensive linemen. They, they lost both their starting tackles from last year. Obviously, returning their um, quarterback, Max Dugan. Uh, which would be a true sophomore, very talented player. You know, lost a lot of um, key players. You know, I think they had six or seven guys, something like that, drafted last year. So lost a lot of key players, but they obviously have a lot of young talent as well that's stepping up. Um, their wide receivers obviously are always super fast. Um, their quarterback is a dual threat quarterback, can run and throw, um, has very hot feet in the pocket and definitely is not hesitant to pull the ball and run. Um, but obviously, you know, like I said, as long as we just play our defense, uh, stay true to our gaps, and stay gap disciplined, we'll be completely fine. Thanks, Wyatt. Appreciate it. Thank you. Jackson. Wyatt, uh, every week you go up in this conference against really talented offenses, but what is the challenge week to week, like trans transitioning from Oklahoma, then to te Texas Tech, and now TCU? Obviously, something has to change week to week. What's the biggest change? this week looking ahead? Um, you talking individually or as a team? Uh, both, if you could. Um, you know, individually, it's definitely tough, you know, handling those double teams sometimes, um, getting chipped by the running backs or um, getting slide protection with the, with the tight end and the running back sliding your way. It obviously makes it tough to pass rush, uh, but obviously it's just a challenge that I have to deal with and something that I just have to go out there and stay productive with. As a team, you know, um, obviously every single offense in the Big 12 is a little bit different. Um, we knew Texas Tech was going to pass the ball a lot. Uh, but after we broke it down, after the coaches broke down the games, you know, it was, it was very simple. And uh, same with TCU, you know, offenses go out there and they only run a certain amount of plays and a certain amount of passing schemes. So as long as we can watch them and get those, you know, memorize and get those down to a T, then it makes the game a lot simpler. And then – as you break those things down as a team, what can you say about some of those changes that the freshmen have had to make week to week and how they've handled those different challenges? Yeah, well, definitely the freshmen that have been playing, you know, TJ Smith, uh, Will Howard, Deuce Vaughn, uh, and a few others, you know, those guys have definitely stepped up into their role and the stage definitely is, isn't too big for them at all. Um, you know, I want to, you know, give credit to a lot of the older guys and a lot of the leaders on this team because they've really taken those guys under and have helped them develop into great players. Um, and, uh, you know, with the success they've had already and the success that they'll have in the future. Um, but, you know, obviously those guys are definitely very talented. And, uh, you know, like I said, the stage isn't too big for them at all. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Chris. Hey, Wyatt, you kind of touched on it there, but from a defensive guy's perspective, how good is Deuce Vaughn? And then just him being a freshman and making the big impact that he's made so far, is that at all surprising to you? Uh, you know, I heard a lot of good things about him before he came here. And, uh, you know, he's always been around football his whole entire life. And, you know, the thing that makes a player great like him, and, you know, I use the word great, you know, 
pretty easily, but, you know, he's only a freshman. But, uh, you know, he's been around football his whole life, and his dad's a, a scout for the Dallas Cowboys. And what makes a player good and great is, you know, not only what they do on the field, but off the field as well. You know, how they handle their business, how they watch film, um, you know, the decisions that they make, who they decide to hang around with, all that kind of stuff plays a plays a big factor into what you do on the field on, and do on Saturdays. And he's just a very mature young man. Um, and he just goes out there and does what he does and works hard. And, you know, obviously the, all the hard work is paying off for him. Thank you. It's why we're three games into this season uh, and you've got Joe Klanderman now as your defensive coordinator. Have you noticed a difference in how he calls a game as opposed to Scotty Hazleton? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I say Scotty Hazleton was a little bit less conservative. Um, ran a lot more blitzes and uh, a lot more pressures. Obviously, we still do that with Coach Klanderman too, but, you know, I'd say it's a little bit more laid back and run a lot more base defense. Um, so, obviously, you know, both sides are – you know, you can make plays, you know, with blitzes or you can make plays, you know, just running base defense as well. So, um, we just try to go out there and do our thing and get off the field. Well, that brings up an interesting question. For a defensive end, is it more satisfying to, to get it a sack off a four-man rush than having it, the assistance of a blitz? Uh, well, you know, yeah, I, I'd probably say four-man rush just because it requires, you know, it's four versus five or four versus six, and uh, it's a lot more rewarding sometimes. And it's a lot more tough, um, you know, other than a blitz, you know, you probably have more blitzers than you do uh, pass protectors. So, um, but, you know, a sack's a sack, you know, it's a great feeling. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, do these uh, last two raised hands, starting with Adam. Wyatt, every member of this football team loves Chris Kleiman and plays hard for him. Just as a player, what's it? feel like when you guys all love your head coach and then your head coach just gets a new contract extension like he just did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think he definitely deserves that. Um, I say that because he shows up every day and just works his butt off. And, um, I, you know, I'm just trying to think what to say just because I have so much emotion for him. Um, you know, we sit in, in our captain's meetings every single Monday and just things that we talk about as a staff – and, uh, you know, the captains on the team and what he gives advice to us about and how he keeps us updated on things, uh, how he's going to do things for the week. Um, but he's always asking us, you know, what what do we want? You know, what's our input? And, uh, you know, we can always give it to him, and he gives us an honest feedback answer. And, uh, you know, the thing that, about Chris Kleiman, you know, he's always going to say we. He's never going to say me. And, uh, you know, that's just something that really sticks out to all of us players. And uh, he always mentioned, he always emphasizes how nobody's bigger than the program and the program's bigger than all of us. And uh, that's just the thing that really sticks out with us. Last one here, Ryan Black. Hey, Wyatt, um, for you, is this specific game one that you have very fond memories of? Because in a way, it was maybe, I think, like your coming out party for people around the rest of the Big 12 and the nation just because, you know, you had two really, really big plays on, like, the next last position for TCU. You dropped Dugan for a loss, and then you hit him uh, on a fourth down play where their pass ended up just dropping to the ground. So just for you, is this a game that gives you a lot of fun memories when you think back on last season's matchup? Yeah, I'd say so. And, uh, you know, I love playing certain teams every single year because of their offenses because, you know, some offenses are definitely a lot more complex than others. Uh, for example, TCU last week, like I mentioned, how they have only run a certain amount of passing schemes, a certain amount of runs. That just simplifies the game so much for a defense. And uh, TCU, you know, a little bit more complex than Texas Tech, uh, but, you know, very simple once you break it down, once you understand their game, their whole entire game plan. Uh, they're going to run a lot of zone. They run a little bit of counter, um, zone read, and uh, just all their passing schemes. So nothing special, nothing that we, you know, we haven't seen in practice. Uh, so that just makes me excited. Obviously, like I said, mentioned earlier, uh, they graduated both their starting tackles last year. So that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to. It's going against those two new guys.